Emma works part time after school at the local takeaway. She's paid her rate per hour and also receives two hours for each delivery she makes. On one day, she works for two hours. She makes five deliveries and is paid a total of 28. Find her rate of pay. Okay, two times her hourly rate. X is going to represent her hourly rate. Five deliveries, so that's five by two euro, which is ten quid, isn't it? Ten quid for the deliveries equals twenty eight quid. Take away ten euro, you get two x equals eighteen, and then divide by two, and you get x equals nine. So she's on a rate of nine euro per hour. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Part B one week she works her H hours and makes D deliveries. Write a formula in H and D for the wage she receives. Okay, her wage is nine multiplied by the number of hours she works. Is that right? Nine euro per hour. So nine multiplied by H is nine times the amount of hours she works. And then two euro multiplied by the amount of deliveries. Did anybody get that? Nine H plus two D. Nine times her hourly wage plus two times the amount of deliveries you make. <laughs> <coughs> Another week she works for six hours and makes 12 deliveries. She also works five hours on a Sunday at time and a half and makes some deliveries. In total, she receives 161 euro 50 for that week. How many deliveries did she make? Huh. All right, let's think about this. Let's take out the six hours and the 12 deliveries to begin with. How much do you get for your six hours of work? Six multiplied by uh, nine, 54 euro, yeah? And your 12 deliveries, two multiplied by 12, is that okay? Now, next thing we're gonna say is she works five hours. What's her rate for Sunday? What does time and a half mean? Yeah, yeah, nine euro multiplied by 1.5, so we're gonna go for 13 euro 50 here, okay? And then she makes a uh, two euro multiplied by D, which is represents her Sunday deliveries. And that will all equal 161 euro and 50 cents. That cool up for you guys? Yeah, got to put all into calc there. We're gonna get 54. We're gonna get 24. We're gonna get five times 13 euro 50. And that's gonna total up to 145 euro and 50 cents. Plus my two times my delivery equals 161 euro 50 cents. Okay, we're gonna take uh, 145 euro 50 cents away from 161 euro 50 cents. I think I'm gonna find out that two times D is 16, is that right? And that means your D value must be eight. You must have made eight deliveries on that Sunday. All right. Uh, question two is covered already. Right, question five, patterns. We have a sequence here. What's the sequence going up in? What you notice about the sequence? Two, four, six, eight. That means it's not a linear sequence. Mm -hmm. And what you notice about the second difference? Huh? If the second difference is the same, is known as a quadratic sequence. Okay, so this is a quadratic sequence. Now, what what what's the next number on the list then? It's gonna go up by ten. Next one after that, yeah, twelve. And then up. Once we go again, fourteen. Kill okay with that. Okay. Use the thought in table show the pattern is quadratic. Okay. 13, 15, 19, 25. What's the next one? 33, wasn't it? And all you have to do is say second difference is the same. C series is quadratic. This is literally your working sort. You just say second difference. 
this constant sequence is quadratic. It doesn't have to be two, it can be any number that doesn't change. It could be three, it could be four. Okay? Now, they want us to find the values of B and C. Everybody see that? This would usually be a TN question, but in this one they're using UN. Okay? Now, here's how you do this type of question. Does anybody know what U1 is? U1. What's the answer for U1? 13. Do you know what that means? If I replace N with 1, the answer has to be 13. Is that okay? So here's what it is. A long note. So 1 squared is 1. This is D and C. Throw the 1 to the other side. And you get B plus C equals 12. For the U2 equation, I'm replacing N value with 2. So I'm going to get N squared plus B times 2 plus C. The answer for U2 is 15. So I'm going to put it equal to 15. And then, oh sorry, that's 2 squared. So it's going to be 4 plus 2B plus C equals 15. So I'm bringing the 4 to the other side and take it away from the 15. So I'm going to get 2B plus C equals 11. Everybody get those two equations? Anybody? All right. I'm going to get rid of the C value. So I'm going to multiply this blue box by minus. When I multiply the blue box by, box by minus, I'll end up with a minus C. And then I'll add downwards. And then we'll find out that my answer for B is actually uh, 23. <coughs> Can it be 23? Oh, we'll see in a second. Okay. If 23 is the B answer, what do you think the C answer is? 23 plus C equals 12. So what do we reckon? C is 12 minus 23. C is minus 11. Keep going. Okay. Uh, next one. The table below shows the first five terms of, a, of an arithmetic sequence. The many you see the word arithmetic sequence, or you know it's linear sequence it's also called, or... You notice that the difference is always the same. What formula do you pull out? You can generally pull out a TN equals A plus N minus 1 times D. Okay, A plus N minus 1 times D. It's in your tables, isn't it? It is in your tables. Okay. Now, what's the A value? What's, anybody know what the A value is? The A value is always the first part of the, ter of the sequence, which is 12. Who knows what the uh, D value is? 2. So we're going we're gonna to put TN equals uh, 12. And that's going to be 2 there, isn't it? So that'll be 2N minus 2. You multiply in the D into the N minus 1. And who got a uh, 10 plus 2N? Good. Is it gives you any term you want. So if I want T5 as an example, see the way we know that T5 is 20. But if I replace uh, 5 in for this equation, see the way it automatically calculates up 20 without me having to do it? That's how the formula works. Once you follow the steps in the recipe, then it will automatically give you any term you want. Oh, uh, it's as of what, what's called the nth term. It, it, it's a, uh, TN means give me a formula that can give me any term you want. Exactly. It's like a universal formula that will give you any term you want. Yes. Where are we going to end from? If you look up the top, you see the D value is 2. 
And you see the way I multiply it in by the 2 to get 2n minus 2. Okay, that's all right. Now, so this formula now, Cormac, is going to tell me what t30 is. Because all I have to do is replace n with 30. And lo and behold, we get an answer of 70. Right. Next one, question six. Fiona earns a gross wage of uh, 1550 every fortnight. She pays income tax, universal social charge, and pay-related PRSI on the wage. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to break up Fiona's. We want to know what income tax is. Income tax is tax you actually pay to the government. Is that okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the 15,000, 1550, okay? Actually, I usually do it like this. Sorry. Uh, if you ever see me do these, I always, I always make a list. Gross tax, oh, sorry, sorry. Gross, gross, in, gross income or gross wage. Uh, tax at 20%, is it? And then we have tax at 40%. You add them both together to get your what's called gross tax. You take away your uh, what's it called tax credits. Tax credits is tax you don't pay, and then we get what's called income tax or tax payable. Okay, so let's go through that. So you have one five five zero, and that's broken up into two parts, isn't it? What's it broken up into? Broken up at 1300 at 20%, and the other one? How much more money do you make more than 1300? How much extra money do you make, lads? Above 1300. You make 250, and that extra 250 gets charged at 40%. So we're going to get 20% of 1300, and then 40% of. Uh, 40% of 250. And that's 100 quid. Now, we're going to add the two of them together to get what's called gross tax. We should pay the government 360 euro, but we're not going it because we have tax credits. The tax credit is 126. So we take the two of them away from each other. And we get 234. That's how much money you're actually going to pay. Now, each fortnight, Fiona also pays USC, Universal Social Charge, on her wage. The rates are 1% on the first 462, 3% on the next uh, 214, and 5.5% on the balance. For the total amount of USC, she pays fortnightly. Okay, what's she getting paid again? One five five zero. So we're breaking up into three parts, aren't we? Four hundred and sixty-two. We're breaking it up into two hundred and fourteen, and then we need to break it up into the remainder. Is that right? So the remainder is. Uh, Eight hundred and seventy-four. Is that right? The uh, 462 gets charged at 1%. The 214 gets charged at 3%. And finally, the 874 gets charged at 5.5%. So I'm just going to do each individual calculation, okay? Actually, Luke, can you take this last box, the 874? Uh, Kenny, will you take the 214 by 3%? And Sean, you take the 462 by 1% to speed me up. 462, is it? I think this one might be 642. Is it? And the last one? 48 euro and 7 cents. I was double check that last one. Oh, 
47 0 8 0 7. Yeah. All right. Add them all together. Fifty-nine euro eleven cents. Fiona also plays. Fiona also pays eighteen euro for each fortnight to fund the sum of her fortnightly deductions. Okay, so what are the fortnightly deductions again? USC. We also have income tax, don't we? And what else do we have? Her her uh, PRSI. So that's your eighteen quid there. What did we say the answer for that last one was? 59.11, isn't it? And 2.34. So we're going to add all three of them together. and eleven cents. All good. Okay. Write the sum of her fortnightly deductions as a percentage of her gross wage. Okay. Her gross wage is fifteen five zero, isn't it? We're gonna multiply that by a hundred. Answer divided by fifteen five zero multiplied by a hundred. 20 euro at 20%, 20 20.1%. Seven. Paul has eight grand that he wants to invest for a maximum of three years. His local bank is offering two options, option one and option two. Okay. Let's go for option one. Okay. Everybody see 8,000? How do you increase it by 2%? What you need to do to increase something by 2%? You multiply it by 102% or you can multiply it by 1.02. Your choice. Is that okay? If you put 102% into your calculator, it will, it will come out as 1.02. Is that okay? Now, how do you increase it for next the year after that then? How do you increase it by 3% then? Multiply your answer by 1.03. That's what will happen. The two of them will multiply first. Then the answer will get multiplied by 1.03. Then the answer to that will get multiplied by what? Exactly. And that's how you do it all in one swoop. You don't. Have, you, you can write it in year by year if you want. You'll still get the same answer. So I know some people who will do it, who do it like this. They go 8,000 by 1.02. They'd write down the first answer. Then they'd multiply by 1.03. They'd write down the second answer. And then they'd multiply by 1.05. And they'd write down the third answer. But you can do it all in one go. And you get €8,825.04. All right, pause it there. Okay, next one. What happens if we choose option two? Now, there is a formula for this in your tables. It's called final value. It's it's under business maths, and it's P plus I to the power of T. Everybody see that? Okay. What's our I for this question? What's our interest rate? 3.7%. I'm about to make a mistake. I'd like you to tell me what mistake I'm going to make. I've made it already. If you read your tables, it will say that I has to be in decimal form not percentage form so you can put 3.7 percent into your calculator if you want and it will kick back out that it's 0 0.037 now what's one plus i then one plus i will be and you know what that means that's that's multiplying so that you increase your value by 3.7 percent is that okay how many years do we do it for? That's the, to the power of three. It's the same thing as multiplying it by 1.37 three times because you're increasing it by the same percentage three times. Is that okay? And our initial investment, 
eight grand, wasn't it? Okay, let's find out. Eight thousand nine hundred twenty-one euro and twenty-six cents. Safe to say we know which one's bigger now, don't we? That's the answer to part one. And that is the answer to part two. What's question C say? Is it part C find the difference between the two investments? Between option one and two. Give one uh, something that he might have a, uh, a reason with. Okay. Let me see. I suppose we can look at it this way. Imagine he had to take out money. Yeah. See the way that see the way that one kicks at five percent at the end. So if he was to invest, if he had money in two years' time, and he was in, he, if he was to invest more money just before year three, there's an advantage in having five percent instead of three point seven percent. Does that make sense? That you could invest money just before year three, and that five percent could really work well for you. Other than the rate of investments, uh oh oh just oh just down here actually here's here's the really easy answer then. Money cannot be taken out for two years. While on this investment, you can take out money at the end of year one or year two. So if you invest in option two, your money is locked up for three years. So that's what you're taking into account, whether you, or not you need the money. Anytime soon. Is that okay? So you weren't allowed to mention the rate of interest. Yes. Yeah. Okay. D. Paul would like his investment of 8,000 euro to amount to 9,000 after three years. What annual rate of compound interest is required for this to happen? Let's think about it. 8,000, yeah. Multiply by some magical number to the power of what? How many years are we investing for? Everybody see this magical number? I'm just going to call it M. Is that okay? 8,000 multiplied by some number. It has to be bigger than 1. Why does it have to be bigger than 1? If it was 1.03, what would be the answer? If it was 1.065, what would be the answer? So it has to be a number bigger than one to make it bigger and the answer is 9,000 would you agree with that here's what we're going to do we're going to divide 9,000 by 8,000 does everybody see that the 8,000 is multiply on the left which makes it division on the right okay with that what button did we use yesterday to get rid of m3 cube root let's just cube root this answer and we're expecting an answer bigger than one, aren't we? Okay. One point zero four. And what percentage is one point zero four? It's four percent because you're making it four percent bigger. Okay, right. let's get back on this right. Yeah. All right, another bank offers to invest money at eight grand in a special fund. This bank has found that in the short term, the amount of money in this fund is V equals 8,000 plus 36T minus 1.22 squared. Find the value of money in the fund after 12 months. Now, what I like to do with these questions is the minute I see the formula, I just go table function and I just lob in the full formula. Okay, and I, I always tend to do this. And, and you know I'm not using T, I'm using X instead. Okay. Yes, it is. Now, zero, and uh, you go all the way up to, up to 12, okay? And that'll give you your first 12 months of money. You start off with eight grand, and what happens to your investments? It starts to go up, doesn't it? And then after 12 months, 
your investment is at $8,259.20. To show the workings for that, anywhere you see T, what do you replace it with? Anywhere you see T, you replace it with 12, and it's easy marks, okay? And long story short, 8,259.20. Okay, next one. Oh, this is tough. Mary invests 8%, 8,000 for one year or percent per annum. After one year, her investment is worth the same as above. It's pretty similar to what we did earlier, isn't it? 8,000 multiplied by some magical number that's above one. This is the way we do it, isn't it? We get our number, we multiply by a number bigger than one, and our answer turns out bigger than our initial, turns out bigger than our initial investment. Pick a letter you want to use, I'll use M again. Okay. Now, how many years did we do it for? Power one or power two, power three? Just one year, isn't it? Power one. Okay. What you do with the eight grand on the other side? Okay. Divided by eight grand. And what do we get there? If somebody just charge me out that number, I'd be quite happy. One divided by the other. Okay, so 1.0324. Okay, so you see this part, Luke? That's the, that's the, the percentage part. So what do you think the answer is? So 1.03 would be 3%. Would you agree with that? The 2 would be 3.2, and then the 4 would be 3.2. Yeah, 3.24%. Okay, good job. Move on to the next one. Okay. Is that the end of that question? All right, question nine. Company A uses the following form to charge a customer for a job. Okay, there's two formulas. There's AH and there's BH. And we need to, we need to complete the formulas for both of them. So here's what we're gonna do. I'll do them one at a time, all right? So, see that form at 30 plus 9.5 H? I'm gonna change that into 30 plus 9.5 X. Okay. I'm gonna start at zero and end at, what's the last one we're ending at? Five. Oh, never mind. Okay, so we're gonna get 30, 39.5. How much do you think it's going to go up by each time? Yeah, it's going to go up by 950 each time because it's a linear equation. So it's 49, 58.5, 68, and you're going to have your uh, 77.5 after that. Okay. We're then going to go to the uh, we're going to go to the next one. Okay. And we're going to put in the next formula. So once again, just going to take out our calculator and just go 10 times 1.74 to the power of x. Good. Power of x. What does multiplying by 1.74 do? Increases your value by 74%. It's going to increase its value by 74% every hour or 74 percent every hour cool with that okay we got 10 17 euro 40 cents uh 30.2 a you know we got 52.68 sorry 52.68 not 50 Uh, 91.66, we got that, and then we have 159.49. All good? 
Right, do you want to ask me to draw this early? Next page. Probably ask to draw it, all right? So grab this here. They're very nice like that. If you can use your table function on your calculator, that you can you can load up on marks on every question. Very handily. All right. So just about executing the diagram now. Okay. So zero thirty. We'll do this one in red. We'll do this one in green. Zero thirty. Here. Uh, one and thirty nine point five, which is just below forty, and two and forty nine, just below fifty. Uh, three and fifty eight point five, uh, four and sixty eight, below seventy, and then five and roughly. Five and seventy-seven. This one has to be a straight line. Why is it a straight line? Can anybody tell me? Why is it a straight line? It's going up the same amount each time. It's going up nine point five each time. It has the same difference. It has to be a straight line. Okay. Next one. The trick here. Right, green zero ten. 117, 240, sorry, 230, 30 ish, 352, 491, 5, 160, basically. This one's what's called an exponential function. You see that it's really curving up and getting bigger all the time. Okay, now, which company would charge least for a job that is, sorry, nothing there. Which company would charge uh, least for a job that takes uh, two and a half hours to complete? Give a reason for your answer. Go to your graph, go to two and a half hours, and you just say, I use my graph, I estimate the green company, company B, will charge me close to 40 euro, while company, the red company, will charge me about 52 euro. Is that okay? So you can say that clearly I'll go with the green company, whoever the green company is, company B. I'll go with company B because they'll charge, uh, according to the graph, they'll charge me below 40 euro, while company A will charge me. Above 50 euro. Is that all right? The formula. Just stick in 2.5. Yeah, it does it does it doesn't say that you're not allowed to use the graph. Uh, it doesn't say you have to use the graph, so yeah, why not? Is that all right? That's probably quicker though, is it? Yeah. Is everybody happy enough with my reason? Uh we'll we'll do a Luke's way as well. Luke, what are the two formulas again? What's AH again? Uh, so 30 plus 9.5, yeah? And you're just going to sub in 2.5 there, is it? And what about BH? Yeah, so I'm, I'm putting in the powers here. And what you get for both of them out of interest? Oh, let's throw them into calculator now. Uh, Luke, you throw in the bottom one, will you? Dom, you throw on the top of the top one. Just tell me what you get. You could do it this way as well. So I did it. I did it by the graph and explained using the graph. But you could also use the formulas and just insert two point five hours, which we're doing now. Yeah, that's what we said. Just below the forty mark, didn't we? Oh, from the for the B one, yeah, and the other one. Fifty three point. Eight. And then if you look at my graph, one of them was pretty much 40, and the other one was just above 50. So it's the same, same stuff. 
right? Use your graphs to elevate, uh, use your graphs to estimate the value of H for which they charge both companies. So when they both charge the same amounts, what do we reckon? Where do you think that happens? See this black point here, what do you think? What do you reckon? 3.1, 3.1, 3.2-ish, probably 3.2. How do I estimate that? See the four blocks, does everybody see the four blocks? So 3.25 is the first block and 3.5 is the second block. 3.75 would be the third block. We can see it's very close to the second block. Exactly. So 3.2 hours would be a good estimate. Okay. Uh, we have a choice here. We can do Luke's methods, or we can we can do the we can do the graph methods, or we can do the formula methods. Which one's more accurate? Formula, because we can make mistakes in the graph, can't we? But the formula would be more accurate. So let's use the formula twice, okay? So what's the A blank equals? I had it up here a second ago. Thirty plus 9.5 times blank, and BH is B blank, 10, 1.74 to the power of blank. What numbers are we putting in? Okay, and what two answers did you get? Uh, you can just re reuse what you did in your calculator earlier. John, do you still have that last calculation in your calculator? You can leave it. 77 point. Sorry, one more time. 277 euro and 50 cent. And what do you get? 52. Take them away from each other. I think it's uh, 190.52. Yeah. What, where are we able to use our graph for this question? Yeah or nay? Why? Because the graph doesn't go beyond five. So the graph wasn't an option for this question. So that's it. All right, guys.